Hi everyone, my name is Gabriel and this is the Hour of the Raven, your channel for everything Ravenloft, RPG, Dungeons and Dragons and horror. Today we will explore the secrets of Burka, a domain where two dark lords play games of intrigue and power in the shadows, full of seduction, betrayals and murders. Before we start, I would like to take a moment of your time. One of the players in my campaign is working on an RPG project and is conducting a research on how people are playing RPGs during the pandemic. If you are willing to participate and help with a short online survey of less than 5 minutes, it would be of great help. I will leave the link below in the video description. I also would like to thank John Mangrum, one of the great authors of the Ravenloft campaign setting, who authorized me to use his material written for the Ravenloft Gazetteer 4 about Burka as reference to this video. The written material expanded the dread possibilities of Borka, but ended up being cut from the final book due to space reasons. The excellent material can be found on the Fraternity of Shadows website, the link of which is also found in the video description. Are you ready? While searching for the location of the Amulet of Souls among the aristocrats' families of Borka, we found a secret compartment in an architect's old mansion containing several documents about the dark secrets of Burka. The famous missing architect used a network of tunnels and secret passages that he had installed in the mansions to spy and blackmail his rivals. The letters and documents reveal Burka's betrayals, intrigues and dark secrets. Power of Raven Those who visit the kingdom of Borka must be careful not to be deceived by appearances. Far from wilderness perils and great supernatural threats, the beautiful architecture of its cities conceal dangerous games of intrigue and manipulation. The great social inequality and the corruption of the nobility create dark secrets and lurking dangers, whether in the dark alleys of the cities or in the middle of the well-lit ballrooms of the aristocracy. Many have lost their lives in these games of intrigue, seduction and power, and the weight of these crimes and injustice affects even the spirit world. Scholars of the occult affirm that the spirits that haunt the lands of Borka can use the death rattle, making their victims believe that they are suffering the same death that these restless spirits suffered. Many victims report suffering from the agony of a slow poison feeling their skin burn, or feeling the pain of little injuries upon encountering the incorporeal undead. One of these hauntings was confronted by the famous monster hunter Rudolf van Richten in Levkarest, who managed to appease the spirits of Thomas Denderich, a valet killed by his master in an arson fire, due to jealousy for his wife. This ghost created illusions in the minds of its victims, making them see their romantic interests everywhere, and then feel the pain of his burning death by his touch. Examples of the cruelty of men, which can even affect the spirit world, can be found everywhere in Borka. The city of Sturban is located at a cross of many important roads, and is an important commercial center in Borka full of merchant guilds and the constant flow of caravans. The city is famous for benefiting from the thermal waters, but one of its most well-known locations is the Wind Breath. The site is a geyser of boiling water, and an iron fountain was built over the site, shaped like two dragon heads facing towards a cage. Convicted prisoners are placed in this cage to await the jets of boiling water, and the local population bets on whether the unfortunate convict will be unlucky enough to survive the first jet and wait in agony for the next scorching bath. Rumor has it that Sturban is also the home of a mysterious secret group. The League of Nine is sought after by the wronged when the law or a duo is not an option. No one ever directly encounter one of its members, but many know some proxy who claims to represent them, 
and who are able to bring their requests for justice to the League of Nine. The secret group is composed of members of important Borkan families, and meet in secret under the disguise of cloak and masks to deliberate on requests. The secret court will evaluate the case, and if it considers the request fair, the offender will die within the next 30 days, in a murder so subtle that it will be almost indistinguishable from a natural death. The petitioner will receive on the day of the death a charge for the services, equivalent to one year of the victim's income. Those who petition for the League of Nine must be sure of their intentions and cause. If the secret court finds your request inappropriate, it will be the petitioner who will suffer a mysterious death, and the alleged offender will be charged for services that he has not even requested. Furthermore, they never accept requests against Ivan or Ivana, and they never attack members of their own families. The city of Ilven, close to the old border with Orvinia, is built around a fort and is a center of the organized militia of Borka, due to its strategic location along the border with Falkovnia. The city is known for its ladder walking and is full of locked roses and tanneries. The temple responsible for these lands, Baron Ozanik, is known for his cruelty and his breeding of dogs. He considered dogs more loyal than men, and trained them to attack their enemies, using them to hunt and patrol his lands, and even as a method of executing criminals. In Ilven, we can also find the Black Hourglass Inn, a place managed by the beautiful Iliana Foami. Iliana is a red widow a shape-shifting creature, a giant and intelligent spider that disguises itself as a beautiful woman to attract its victims. The attic of the tavern is full of men who, seduced by her beauty, became victims of the creature, serving it as food. Eliana hides her nature and has her own schemes and plans. Disguised as a beautiful woman, she attracts the attention of Ivana Borizzi, and was unwittingly subjected to the poisoning process that would transform her into an Ermordenung. When Ivana discovered Iliana's true nature as a Red Widow, she banished her from her court, but she is obsessed with discovering the formula of the poison of life which would have given Ivana eternal life and youth. North of Ilven, in the territory of the former Kingdom of Dorvinia, we find Lichberg, the former capital. Located in the altitude of the mountains, its origin refers to an old monastery of the religion of Andro. About 600 years ago, the region was acquired by Lech Kosko, a nobleman who transformed the monastery into a fortress, and the city gradually grew around it. Considered impregnable, thanks to its position in the mountains, it remained unsketched during the Turk invasion. Only coming to know the horrors of war, when Vlad Drakov made a surprise attack in the region, in the events known as the Golden Claw Massacre. Although it is away from the trade routes, Lichberg is a center of wealth, thanks to the numerous mines that surround it. Today, the city harbors numerous industrial activities, and is known for the minting of coins and for being the home of important banking families. Rumor has it that these families keep their wealth in their coffers hidden deep inside the mountains, protected by traps, guards, and supernatural forces. The bankers of Borka also have a macabre reputation for using mystical means to secure their income. In some loan contracts, the borrower is required to provide a corporeal collateral by handing over a vial of his own blood. Although many believe that this is a symbolic gesture, or a scare tactic, it is certain that many of this family know hidden occult secrets or can afford to hire the services of a sorcerer to use the blood to curse the lives of those who become bad payers. The city of Lichburg is also known as a center for theatrical activities, and numerous companies perform at the huge summit theater, sponsored by the enthusiast Ivan Dislisnia. The most famous author of plays is Cesar Vercenzo, and he takes permanent residence in the city. Sinister rumors surround the pieces presented by the author. Cesar Vercenzo 
had a famous opera about a Vistani who exchanges his eyes for gems with a hag in order to see the future, but the gems only showed him his own death at the hands of a supernatural murderer. These gems of divination became coveted pieces, but they led greedy people to see only their own deaths. On the opening night of the opera, a blind beggar came to the doors of the theater and cursed Vercezzo. If he dared to steal his pain and tragedy for his art, the world would steal back from his writings. Since then, all those who acted in Vercezzo's plays ended shortly afterwards suffering the same fate as their characters. The author gradually began to realize the effect of his plays on his actors, but is afraid to change the tragic and macabre themes of his operas and plays, for fear of displeasing his patron, Ivan Dislizia, falling from his grace. Next to Lichberg, there is the large de Gravo state, the current home of Seth Ivan Dislizhnia, former ruler of the Ovinia, who now shares power with his cousin Ivana. The palace where Ivan lives is surrounded by walls that hide a vast garden. The Dislizhnia sumptuous property has countless rooms and ballrooms for dinners and dances. There is also a wing known only as the playroom, a private area for Lord Ivan, where those invited to enter are never seen again. Rumor suggests that Ivan Dislizhnia has heirs he does not know. Ivan had a brief marriage to Lucretia Marseilla between 716 and 720 of the Peruvian Canada, when he poisoned and murdered his wife. During this short period, she became pregnant twice and once had twins. Whenever she became pregnant, however, Ivan seemed to be in a bad mood, claiming that he had been betrayed. Although official records indicate that all three children were stillborn, rumors circulate that Lucretia bribed their midwives to escape with the children from the gravel, and that such children may be being raised safely away from their father to one day claim the inheritance of Ivan's fortune. Hidden in the gravel mansion is an artifact of great power, which may be linked to Dorvinia's own imprisonment by the mists. Nikolai's dagger is an artifact passed down between generations of this Lysnia, and is now kept by the dangerous Lord Ivan. The dagger once belonged to a former family patriarch named Nikolai, who grew his family fortune and power immensely during his heyday. Although he had many children, they always seemed foolish and incompetent to his eyes, unable to follow in his footsteps and ruining the fortune he had built. As his age advanced, he became more bitter and demanding, and he revolted with the life of luxuries and excess of his heirs. He put all his hopes on the child that was expected by his granddaughter Nadia, believing that he would have a great grandson whom he would educate and teach everything necessary to grow his legacy. In his delusions and senility, he made numerous plans for the coming great grandson and closely accompanied his birth. When the child was born and he discovered she was a girl, Nikolai saw this as a mockery of fate and rebellion of his children, even though the sex of the child mattered little to his plans. Given in to madness, hatred and frustration, Nikolai used the dagger to murder his granddaughter and great-granddaughter and attack the midwives, causing a bloodbath. Pursued by his relatives, the bloody old man fled through the castle to a parapet, from which he launched himself to his death. His body disappeared in the mists, and only the dagger was found, and many scholars point out that this may have been the event that brought Dorvinia to the demiplane of dread, although shrouded by mists. The region remained isolated from the world for centuries, until the arrival of Ivan Dislizhnia also fleeing from the murder of family members. Legend says that the dagger has a powerful cut and can transmit a potent toxin, and it becomes even more lethal as it takes more lives. Some speculate that the dagger guards the soul of the infamous Nikolai, and that he may possess the body of the unwary who used the dagger for murder, increasing his power and desire for revenge. 
moving away from the cities. In the Dodok Heights, we find the imposing Mount Gris, home to the dangerous and legendary Night War, a flock of bats that infest the abandoned mines. Many attacks on cattle and people are attributed to this legendary swarm of bats, but the truth is even more sinister. Years ago, in the abandoned mines of this mountain, Vladimir Nobrikov was born, a natural werebat lycanthrope. As an infant, this creature saw his parents being hunted and killed by the famous monster hunter Dr. Rudolf von Richten, a learner that in order to survive, will to need to hide among men. Assuming his human form and the name of Vladimir Nobliskov, he passed as a nobleman from Burka and lived a life of luxury in Lichberg. The Scarlet Prince, as he was known for the red color of his robes, used his charisma and magnetism to seduce his victims, and gradually drained the blood of the women with whom he was romantically involved. To dispel suspicions about his nature, he broke up with his lovers, when they began to show signs of weakness and illness. His involvement with the Pretorius family resulted in his fall. The Scarlet Prince's influence on Monique and Jennifer was investigated by a group of adventurers who initially believed they were facing a vampire. Despite the misunderstanding, Nobliskov was defeated, and for a time, it was believed that evil had been destroyed and everything would return to normality. Nobliskov's last victim, Lady Jennifer, escaped from the monster and later married Baron Amto Okratai. The family moved to their state in the Stalin, but the nightmare soon resumed. Jennifer is infected with lycanthropy and became a werebat, and her transformation is triggered by the sound of the bat flock the legendary Night Swarm. After her first accidental transformation, the giant bats of the Night Swarm perceived in Jennifer a leader of their pack, and now they search for her every night, so that the werebat might lead them in their hunts. The Ocrotines family seek help to try to save late Jennifer, and try to isolate her in a soundproof room every night, but the bat swarm always find a way to communicate with poor Jennifer. Close to the Stalin region, south of Mount Greece, is the small town of Vorziden. The city once housed numerous woodcutters and miners, but with the exhaustion of Mount Greece silver veins, the Alpine city has lost much of its population. Vorziden was built above old mining tunnels, and many claim that underneath the city, numerous abandoned tunnels still exist. Legends say such tunnels are home to macabre beasts, but evidence suggests that they are used by smugglers and criminal groups. The region around Vorziden has been taken over by numerous vineyards and wineries, which produce the best and most expensive wines of Borka. Currently, the city is under the control of powerful wine-producing family, and a good part of its population is involved in some of these activities. In 727, one of these wineries found the Coppersworth toadstool in its vineyards, a dangerous species that only grows in the tainted forests. Despite burning the toadstools, the underarse wine harvest of 727 was contaminated, and three out of four bottles contained the little spores. Interestingly, the fame of the 727 vintage made the bottle extremely expensive and famous. The Andaas family tries to buy back all these bottles for destruction, but collectors pay a high price for sealed bottles, and for the morbid chance of risking their lives with a poisoned wine. Finally, Levkares, the capital of Borka, is the most cosmopolitan city in the kingdom. Located in a central position of the core, it receives trade routes from the four corners of the continent, and it's famous for its shops and restaurants, where the cuisine of various parts of the continent can be experienced. The capital is also considered a cultural reference and is home to many art galleries and music halls. The architecture of the city is also immediately recognizable, 
the some buildings are impressive for their grandeur and beauty, with a city full of mansions of nobles and aristocrats who live in the capital. As we move away from the city center, however, social inequality and poverty show their face in narrow streets and slums that are home to a large mass of poor and unfortunate people. It's impossible not to mention the great cathedral in Levkarest, an impressive architectural feat that houses the seat of Ezra's fate in Borka. The large main hall is filled with stained glass, statues and gargoyles, which seem to be moving away in fear of the glory of the goddess Ezra. Not even the halls of this sacred building are free from intrigue, however. A secret cabal has gathered to conspire within the church which calls itself the Heirs of Jakob de Zlitnia. This group is composed of nobles with little or no chance of inheriting the fortune of their families, that saw in the clerical path a chance to raise in power. They plot to use the influence of the Church of Ezra on the masses to increase their own influence on Borka and neighboring kingdoms. Even among those who are truly devoted to the faith, Danger lurks the members of the church. Torret Johann Severin is a middle-aged man who wears a mask to cover part of his face, disfigured by a vampire. A clergyman in the past has ventured with the famous monster hunter Rudolf von Richten in the fight against the forces of darkness, but today he is dedicated to the church and to the spread of Ezra's word. Known for having access and good transit between the nobility and the most humble classes in Borka, he hides a secret against which he has been fighting an internal struggle. Despite knowing Ivana's Boristi fame as the cruel Black Widow, Johan has nurtured a growing desire for Borka's sovereign and is unconsciously acting to be in her presence whenever possible. It is a matter of time before the Dark Lady of Borka realizes that she has one more admirer enslaved by her charms, and decides to use him in some of her cruel schemes. Another noteworthy construction in Levkarest is the Misericordia Mansion, the home of Sefaza Ivan Boritsi. The name of this construction reminds us of kind and charitable love, but many of the natives of Borka refer to the place as Miseria Corpa, or the body of misery. The luxurious building has numerous balconies, walks and parapets, from where you can sometimes see the lonely figure of Ivana. Halls are used in constant parties and social events, where only artists and the elite high society of Borca usually attends. Among the famous attendees of these events, there is a secret group of members of the court, known as a Mordenung. This group is formed by attractive and young people, who seem to live a life of hedonistic excesses and pleasures. Their eternal beauty and youth makes many mistakenly suspect that they are vampires, but this belief is easily dispelled by the appearance of such groups in broad daylight. The dark truth is that these people were subjected to the terrible experiments of Ivana Boritsi, and became a living weapon, the embodiment of poison. Their bodies have been infused by a potent toxin, which kills most of their targets. After a painful period of 15 days in coma, those who survived became Ermordenung, living weapons at the service of Ivana Boritsi. The toxic infusions leave the Ermordenungs with a supernatural strength. The mere touch of these creatures can transmit a powerful poison, and many of them wear gloves and clothing that prevents unwanted contact. A kiss from these creatures is lethal and could kill an individual in mere seconds. The great tragedy of the existence of these creatures is that they are solitary and totally deprived of contact with the body of another living creature. Although they are immune to all kinds of poison, they are not immune to the touch of members of their own kind, and they live a solitary existence. The first of these creatures created by Ivana Boritsi was Nostalia Romaine, her best friend throughout her adolescence. Ivana developed the powerful Emordenum breeding compound, 
and convinced Nostalia to be the subject of her first experiment. She used her friend as a weapon to kill her mother, Camille Borizzi, the Dark Lady of Porca. After using Nostalia to play with Camille's paranoia, Ivana revealed herself to her mother so that she would know the face of her murderer. Camille barely had time to react to her doctor treason when Nostalia kissed her lips and she died immediately to the sound of her doctor's laughter. After feeling Camille's lips against her, Nostalia developed an aversion to the feminine touch and only kill other women using a poisoned dagger. Despite everything, she remains loyal to Ivana and acts as leader of the Immodernums. It was Nostalia who developed an elixir to prevent the Immodernum from aging, and many remain loyal to Ivana to remain forever young and beautiful. Other infamous Immodernum are the couple Elgin and Rosalia de Zuni. Envious of the true love between the talent and beautiful painters, Ivana transformed both with her toxins. The artist couple found themselves forever deprived of each other's touch, but while they aren't serving Ivana as murderers, they continue to paint and have become famous artists. Recently, they have found a magic ring of regeneration and have used such an artifact to create disturbing and sadistic paintings. Their models are traumatized by countless injuries, but most of the time live with her bodies intact, thanks to the magic effects of the ring. Sometimes, however, some miscalculation occurs, and the mutilated bodies of their models can be found floating in the river. In addition to the ominous Emordenung, Ivana Borizzi is also advised by some members of her family. Count Suolo Borizzi, her younger brother, now 60 years old, is the Stapan responsible for managing Levkarest in the imposing mass of Hall. The children of her late middle brother, Anton Borizzi, work in the management of the Borizzi Trading Company, with influence that span over several kingdoms of the core. Strange humors have also circulated about the presence of an unrecognized son of Ivana Borizzi. Although Ivana cannot have children, some enemy or rival created this lie to try to destabilize the Borizzi family from within, saying that Ivana had a son or doctor in secret and that the child was taken away from her cruel and insane mother. Sometimes, some fool tried to take advantage of these rumors and try to pass himself or even present himself to Ivana as her heir. Some fools have already come to Misericordia to introduce themselves to their mother, but the most astute of these pretenders is Eduardo Leone, a merchant who resides in Nova Vaza and who forged several documents to prove his baseless allegations, hoping to one day claim his inheritance. He's not a fool to introduce himself to Ivana with such false claims, and he waits patiently for the day of her death to carry out his plans. Researching more about the Borizzi family, we discover that the Misericordia Hall houses numerous secret passages, as well as various relics and treasures. One of these family relics kept in Ivana's coffers is the Dazing's icon of Ezra. This panel, painted in wood and ivory, represent three panels with images of Ezra's life, and was created by the artist Denzing, who made just 20 of these panels, each of them a unique masterpiece. Many have been lost and destroyed over time, but Ivana maintains one that she received as a gift from her father when she was just 8 years old, just before he was murdered by her mother Camille. The legends say that this artifact is sacred, and those who pray before the image will be able to receive divinations with images of the past, present and future. It is also said that in the basements of Misericordia Hall, there is a large stone filled with ancient hieroglyphs, called the Death Stone. No one knows how such stone came to be owned by the Borizzi, but they say it was brought by explorers from distant lands and had been in their cellars for countless generations. Experts and academics 
Seda symbols have a common origin with artifacts found in the distant land of Haraki and Cebua. The Death Stone is an artifact created to store souls. The fragments of this stone can be used to create daggers that, when used to murder a person, crumble into dust but imprison the victim's souls in the Death Stone. During the Grand Conjunction, cracks appeared on the Death Stone and voices and wails echoed from within. This is one of the best kept artifacts by Ivana, and it is said that from the powder extracted from these stones, Ivana makes the substance and toxins capable of transforming someone into a murderer. Our research on the letters and documents found in the architect mansion reveals Borka Macabre's secrets, but we still have not found the whereabouts of the Amulet of Souls. In one of the documents, however, we'll find the plans of Misericordia Hall, revealing secret passages that can take us to the Borizzi family coffers. Desperate to get rid of the profane pact signed with Inahira, we took the map with us and ventured into Ivana's opulent mansion. It is already night when we explore the mansion's secret passages, and we hear the sound of festivities in the house from afar. Perhaps the distraction of the party can prevent us from being discovered. We proceed carefully through the tunnels, until we reach the entrance to Lady Ivana's secret room. Carefully to avoid poisonous traps, we search her possessions for the amulet. Our searches do not lead us to the amulet, but we discover a book containing reminiscence of the Cephaza Ivana Borizzi. Join us, subscribe to this channel, and together we will explore the best and dark secrets of Ivana Borizzi, the Black Widow and Dark Lady of Borca.